In this video, we're going to talk about radioactive decay. Uh, that's the second thing I'd like to talk about. But I just wanted to make sure that I, uh, I was clear about what we said uh, in the last video, which was about energy. Just to make sure you know, for energy, we actually measure things in electron volts. And remember that equation from uh, topic 5, which was about electric currents. There was that equation, VE equals, whoops, I better make this a bit lower. So VE equals half MV squared. And that told you the kinetic energy of an electron that's been accelerated through a potential difference of one volt. So that means that one EV of energy, it is a unit of energy, instead of joules, you use electron volts. It's just the charge of an electron, which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, except you just multiply that by one volt. So it turns out a coulomb times a volt it gets you a unit of energy, uh, and it's this many joules. So this just helps you to convert back and forth between energy in joules or electron volts. But in nuclear physics especially, we use EV. That's the unit of choice here. You'll see why that is uh, when we work with E equals mc squared and binding energy. So let's talk a bit about decay then. Um, decay sometimes, uh, well, this is an atom. If it's unstable, it can just become something else. That's kind of cool. So when you have something becoming something else, people used to call that, uh, sometimes it's called transmutation. But the key here is that there's three different main types of decay that we talk about in physics, uh, SL and HL. And those three types are the following. So the first type is called alpha decay. That's going to be the first one. Okay, so alpha decay. What does that mean? Well, by the way, first of all, when we see these, uh, this is, they were called alpha, and the next one, by the way, is going to be called beta. The next one's going to be called gamma. Those ones were called that because at first they, they weren't sure what that particle was. They knew that uh, this um, element was you know, changing from one thing to another, but they didn't know what that particle was that was you know, missing. So they called them alpha particles at first, but now we know. Now we know that an alpha particle is just a helium-4. So this is the key thing, I think, in alpha decay is this right here. Okay? That an alpha particle is nothing but helium-4. In other words, it's a regular old helium, and that means it's got two protons, and because 4 minus 2, that tells, that tells you it's also got two neutrons. So that's just helium-4 is all an alpha particle is. So when uh, looking at these, sometimes you'll be asked to sort of solve these decay equations. And they're actually super duper easy. This is uh, one of my favorite things to do. Um, just because it's, it's actually quite a, an easy game. All you have to do is know how to add or subtract, and you can do it. So an example then of uh, alpha decay, maybe you're asked um, to fill in a decay equation. So maybe you're given something like uranium-238. So you'll be told something like this. Maybe then you'll be told uh, uranium-238, it undergoes alpha decay. And then they'll tell you, you know, uh, They'll probably tell you what element it is because you're not supposed, you don't have to know what every element in the uh, periodic table is. So they'll tell you, you know, basically what goes here and what goes here if it undergoes alpha decay. This might be the question. So they'll say, you know, well, what's the atomic number, what's the mass number of, uh, of thorium here? That's what it'll be. So uranium-238, that's one that's in the news a lot uh, because, you know, if uh, you're looking at uh, nuclear reactors and nuclear weapons, well, uranium-238 is one of the key things here. But it's a naturally occurring uh, element, and it happens to be radioactive, so it can turn into something else. So it can turn into thorium. But if we're told it uh, undergoes alpha decay, then instead of adding an alpha particle, let's add what it really is, which is a helium-4. This will help us because the number of protons at the bottom here must be the same as the total sum of the number of protons on the right. So in that case then, all I have to do is be able to add or subtract and figure out, well, 92 equals what plus 2? That's it. So then basically I would say, all right, well, uh, since I can add and subtract, this is 92, uh, whoops, apparently I can't. <laughs> uh, this would be a 90 that would go here. So thorium must be element number 90. 
And what number goes on the top here? Well, 238 equals what plus 4? That should be 234. So if we put in a 234 here on the top and a 90 on the bottom, that will get this to work. So that's an example of alpha decay. Anytime you see alpha decay, just remember a helium-4 particle gets kicked out or uh, it's added to that side. So that's how we do what's called a decay equation. It implies that this right here, we call this the parent uh, because this is what starts off. This is actually called the daughter. Isn't that cute? We don't really talk about sons, so for some reason we only talk about daughters. So there's the parent and there's the daughter, nuclide. Those are what these are called here. Um, now we can also have beta decay. And there's two types of beta decay. So the first type is called electron beta decay. And that tells you something right there. It's because this beta particle is actually an electron. So what that means then is it's going to be this. It's going to be a beta particle and it's going to actually be given, this right here is going to be the key here. Whoops, actually I should add something else. So the key here is going to be that this is a beta particle and it actually, well it has zero, pro, uh, zero nucleons. That's because it's, it's not an element, it's not an atom. It's a piece of an atom, it's just an electron. So electrons don't have any protons. Electrons don't have any neutrons. Remember, an atom is made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. So it has none of those, but what we do in order to make the charge and everything else work out, it turns out we say it has negative one protons. That's because an electron is, it has the opposite charge. And so we, we use this negative one here to help us out. But there's a sneaky little thing here that these beta decay always get something else added to them. These are really sneaky particles. These are actually called neutrinos. So that's the key right here, is this right here is an anti-neutrino. I don't mean it's someone's ant, and you'd call it an anti, no, I mean opposite of neutrino. So that's what a beta, uh, electron beta decay looks like. It always kicks off a beta particle of negative one like this, plus an anti-neutrino. Now neutrinos are a whole other subject and I think they're really interesting because um, yeah, they're in the news a lot at least at the moment. Um, but these neutrinos, they're very, very fast moving particles. They may actually go exactly the speed of light. Some people have questioned, can they even go faster than the speed of light? Um, and these particles have little to no mass, so they're, they're kind of strange particles because they go really quick. But in any case, this is what we get. So we could see an example of this. So maybe um, we have, what is it, cesium-137. Now cesium is element number 55, I believe. And if cesium-137 uh, undergoes beta minus decay, as it's sometimes called, let's say it gives us uh, barium. So basically the goal then is going to be f to figure out what numbers go here. So if it undergoes beta minus decay, then we know that we can add a beta minus particle. Of course, we have to add an anti-neutrino. Now, neutrinos don't have uh, neutrons or protons. They don't have anything, so we, we make it like a zero, zero. So in this, uh, if that's the case, then we can just calculate and figure out, well, what has to go here? So this one right here, well, 55 equals something minus one. So this actually is going to be 56. So barium is element number 56. And this top number right here is just going to be the same. So we're going to actually call it barium-137. So that's an example of how to deal with this one. Now we also have a second kind of beta decay, and that's called positron. That sounds cool, huh? Positron beta decay. So there, like uh, the electron beta, it has a zero on the top, but this is a plus one on the bottom, and it gets a, a regular neutrino. So this... This is just called a regular neutrino here that gets kicked out here. So an example of that could be, um, let's say, sodium-22. So that's one that could do it. So let's say uh, we have sodium-22, and that's uh, element number 11. And sodium-22 is going to underco undergo um, positron beta decay, and it's going to make uh, neon, of course, plus 
uh, plus one here and plus a neutrino. Whoops, I made this. This is actually a little, it's not quite a V, it's actually a Greek letter, I think it's called nu. So that's this weird little V looking thing. Uh, so that's what happens here, but we have to figure out what goes here. And again, same game as before. 11 equals what plus one? Well, that's 10. And this number here is just gonna be 22. So that, hopefully you see how easy this is. There's nothing to it. What's kind of cool though is that positrons and electrons are opposite to each other. They're actually called antimatter to each other. So you might think antimatter sounds like something from science fiction, but it's not. Um, if an electron and a positron are booting along and then they meet, turns out they will annihilate each other, they'll disappear and you'll just get photons out. So that's really cool. And very last thing of course is um, gamma decay. And nothing exciting happens there because this is just light. So a gamma particle is nothing but a photon. So that means when you look at this right here, we write it with this symbol here, gamma. And uh, it's just a photon, which means if something undergoes gamma decay, it just means the electron got excited and then dropped back down. In other words, nothing really changes here. So that is alpha, beta, and gamma decay.